Luke 10, well, here we've got the parable of the Good Samaritan. The parable of the Good Samaritan asks us to understand that we are that man who went down from Jerusalem down to Jericho. And we were attacked by thieves. We, yes, you and me, were left helpless and almost dead. And the Levite and the priest representing the law of Moses and Judaism, they came near to us, but they walked on unable to help us. And then there came the Samaritan, and he clearly represents Jesus. He poured in oil and wine, just as Jesus gave us his spirit, represented by the oil, and his blood, represented by the wine. He put us on his donkey, and he walks next to us. And when it was, in those days, it was always a servant who walked, and it was the master who rode on the donkey. But he is a servant of all. He, as it were, is the servant who, who walks, and we are on the donkey. So he was our servant in his death on the cross and in his life for us. And he brings us to the inn, to the hotel, which is like the church. And he gives the innkeeper two, two pennies, promising, I will come again just as Jesus promised that he will come again at his second coming. Now, in those days, a man worked for one penny a day. And so he gives the man two pennies, as if to imply, I'll be back after two days. Well, Peter says that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years. You could take that as meaning that roughly 2,000 years after his death, he will come back to see how we're getting on, as it were, to the healed man whom he has saved. So it fits, doesn't it, very, very nicely. It fits together wonderfully. So we are, as it were, that man in the inn, in the hotel, waiting for Jesus to return. So the church, the inn, is a hospital for sinners. We shouldn't be surprised if we find other people recovering with us who are also sinners, beat up by sin. And the power of this parable, I think, depends on realising that we are really helpless sinners, totally dependent upon the Lord to come and save us. And unless we're convicted of our sin and the seriousness of our position before God, then the good news of Jesus, his coming to our rescue, this will not be such wonderful news for us. And Jesus ends the parable by saying, you go and do likewise. We're to do the work of Jesus, as it were, for others. To help the helpless, to salvation, to healing, to be their servant. Now that's an amazingly high calling, and quite rightly, it should consume our whole mind, our whole strength, our whole soul.